Okay, today's uh, Minnesota ID um, presentation, species, PowerPoint, whatever you may have, um, was, is over just in general some Minnesota game fish. Um, now, this is not an all-encompassing list. There's all kinds of um, fish that reside in Minnesota. Uh, I'm going to cover some of the big ones, some of the basic ones, some of the ones that um, we're going to be talking about and that you're going to hear about. Uh, it is definitely a longer identification um, presentation than some of our previous ones. So bear with me on that. Might have to uh, chunk it into a couple parts. Uh, I will start off um, with the title screen here as far as Minnesota fishes. Uh, the plural for fish is still fish, but the plural for multiple fish species is fishes. There's your uh, trivia fact for the day there. So um, starting off with some unique ones. Um, the first one is the uh, big mouth buffalo. Uh, or sheep's head is probably what um, you've called this thing maybe before. Um, common in the Mississippi River uh, and other parts of the state, but you see them most in the river. Uh, it is a large sucker fish. You can grow up to three feet in length and 50 pounds. It's this big, kind of big, ugly looking thing with this big head on it. Uh, it does look some, very much like a carp without the barbels, so no whiskers around its face. Uh, and it can be colored from green to gold to almost black. And my picture example is almost kind of a whitish color looking thing there. Um, yeah, big, thick fish. Um, you, the scaling, I always feel like it gives you kind of a carp feel to it. Um, not a very sought after fish for um, protein or for eating there. Um, next up is the bowfin or dogfish. Um, same thing, you're gonna find these in um, a lot of different lakes and rivers. Um, they they Definitely slower moving water. Um, unique thing about them, they are capable of breathing air because evolutionarily speaking, they are an older fish species. They've been around the block a few times. It is eel shaped, so it's long and, and skinny. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the top of this dorsal fin, the top of that dorsal fin runs almost the entire length of the, of the back of the fish. Okay, so that's kind of a unique feature. Um, also, it has... Um, the males have that black dot towards the tail. Plus the pectoral fin is down and located much lower, giving it kind of that look of three sets of fins on its um, underside there. There's a look at a bowfin. I don't see any particular uh, um, dot in the back, so it must be a female bowfin. But I do like that look of the um, dorsal fin running almost the entire length. Similarly looking but um, skinnier and it's got this weird, um, almost like a little goatee. It's got a little um, barb underneath its chin. Is the burbot or the eel pout. Um, it's got the single barb underneath the mouth. It has that long dorsal fin as well, but you can see it's kind of it's broken up a little bit there um, at the top. Um, it is skinnier than the bowfin. Uh, its skin is, is fairly smooth and less scaly. Uh, and your um, trivia fact about it is Every year, I believe it's ice fishing, so it's in the wintertime, there is a eel pout festival in Walker, Minnesota. Here's a look at that eel pout. You see the dorsal fin. You see that barb underneath its chin. Um, this one's got kind of that distended abdomen, so it must be um, pregnant or, or, or something there. Not pregnant, carrying eggs. Um, next up are, are species you should have heard of before. These are four bass species found in the state. Um, I say you should have heard of them because they're a large source of revenue for the state of Minnesota. Uh, we'll start off with the um, maybe the most common one, and that is the largemouth bass. Its first dorsal fin is highest in the middle. So if you look at the top there, it's got this dorsal fin that's highest in the middle. Second, the first dorsal fin is also very pointy or spinous, and the second one's soft to touch. Um, it has this huge mouth. I don't think I have a good picture of its mouth, and actually I should have put that on there, but it has this massive mouth that opens up um, larger than the size of its head. Um, that also has very, really small teeth in there. So when, you, um, when you're handling a bass, you can actually just put your, your thumb right on that bottom lip, and you won't really get um, scratched up or cut or bitten at all by, by the bass there. It's got that lateral black line running down the side of its body. Uh, they can get big. They can go up to twenty in uh, Minnesota. They can get up to twenty-eight inches. Uh, I think maybe like seven pounds, eight pounds is the record. Um, 
bass are found throughout the United States. Down south, they get much larger. They are, you know, well, they don't have to slow down for the winter time down south. They, uh, they can be much larger down there. There is a look at a largemouth bass swimming in its natural habitat. And I said, you can kind of see this fold down there on its uh, mouth. That whole mouth opens up in order to eat. Hey, go on and talk about different bass all day here. Um, smallmouth is next. Um, smallmouth has these, these brown spots kind of making this barred look on the side of its body. Its mouth is also quite large, but smaller than large mouths. If you can see here, it's stopping before it reaches the eye. When we look through the large mouth, it extended past the eye. There's a small mouth. I have written down as it's a yellow green body. I, I feel like I need to change this. I, almost all of the smallies I've seen are more um, kind of a, a rust colored or, or brownish colored even. Um, and they can, they can also get quite large. They're typically not going to be quite as large as the largemouth bass are. So there's a look at a, a smallie there. You can kind of see the barring on its sides. And you can see its mouth is not quite as large. <laughs> Next up, the smallest bass in the, in the uh, category here is the rock bass. Um, this one looks much more like a, a giant uh, sunfish, I always think, or, or bluegill of sorts. Um, but it is a bass. Uh, it's got that row of black spots kind of running along its side that you can see. Uh, it's got black edges on its fins. Um, it's got um, typically has a reddish colored eye. So if we take a look at this thing, like I said that's that's a good look at a um, rock bass. There you see its eyes kind of reddish in color. It's got those black dots moving down um, the side. And if you can see, this one's about ten inches long. That, that's that's a very normal sized. Um, rock bass. Last bass in the category is a white slash yellow bass. Um, these ones are, I'm trying to think where these ones are found. I think they're found more, more so up north. Um, one thing I noticed, they're definitely lighter in color. They also have this, this scooped out front head, almost like a, like a grizzly bear with that, that scooped out um, front head uh, that leads up to the dorsal fin back there. Um, and you can see it has that depth of fish between the dorsal fins. Uh, it's not going to get quite as big in our area as the um, other bass species are, but there's a look at them. So those are our four bass species. We are going to move on to three catfish species. Okay, so catfish in general are bottom feeders. Okay, they're going to patrol the bottoms of rivers and lakes, um, eating a larger variety of things down there. Uh, we can't call them kind of trash fish because they will eat whatever garbage is is, um, is swimming down there. Uh, and they have these these kind of telltale like whiskers or um, barbs in the front of their face. Uh, they're definitely barbs, um, but they look like whiskers, hence the name catfish there. First one we have is the channel catfish. Uh, it likes warm, fertile rivers and lakes. A lot of them in the Mississippi River. Um, it's got these scattered dark spots on this light um, side. The anal fin is rounded. So if you look at it here, it's this rounded thing. And then the tail or the caudal fin is notched. Okay, so it's got the notch missing out of it there. There's a channel cat. You get see where it gets its name, catfish, with the, the whiskers hanging off of it there. Next up is a flathead. Uh, look at it. It's got a flathead. That's an easy name for us to remember. Uh, it's a darker molting on the sides. It has a slight underbite, so if you look, it's lower, it's lower jaws, um, a little bit um, in front of the upper jaw. It's got this wide, flat head, and it has this white tip on the upper lobe of the caudal fin. Not found on monsters, meaning that the huge ones won't have that, that white tip there. So there's a flat head. They can get to be quite large, that is for sure. Uh, and the last ones tend to be the smallest ones, um, bullheads. There are three varieties, brown, black, yellow. They're definitely a stockier built fish and usually kind of have a rounded head. Here's a look at our bullhead catfish. Like I said, usually a little rounder head there. All right, moving on. Actually, we got a, we got a bunch of uh, Minnesota species here. Um, the crappie is the next one. It is a popular game fish. There's a lot of people who go crappie fishing. They, they uh, enjoy the um, 
the, the taste of the protein there. Um, it is a kind of a, um, a medium sized fish. It's not going to be as big as your, your bass. It's not going to be as small as your um, panfish or sunfish. It's kind of that medium sized panfish that makes it popular. It has this long pre dorsal region. So if you look, the dorsal fin's kind of angled back here. And it's, it's a long ways down the, the backside of the fish there as it's going. We see kind of this, this speckling to it. Um, and there are black and white varieties found in Minnesota. So here's a look at a crappie. Notice the mouth is um, more of like a bass mouth. Like you can actually you can kind of grab that. And notice this long dorsal region before it kind of angles back into this dorsal fin um, and the, the spotting on the side there. Um, and like I said, it's not a, it's not a small fish, it's not a big fish. It's just kind of that medium sized, um, pan fish that some people are after. All right. Going from a medium sized fish to the largest fish species that is in our waters. That is a lake sturgeon is up next. Lake sturgeon is a rare Minnesota species. If you look, there are documented lake sturgeon populations in those counties pictured in the green. Um, it is a primitive fish, so it is actually in a different order. We're going to be talking about this in the future. Uh, a different order of um, fish species than our other fish that we've been talking about thus far. Um, what makes it different? Its skeleton is not made of bony material or, ca or calcium phosphate. It is made out of cartilage. All right, so it's kind of more closely related to sharks there than it is um, bass or um, walleye or those kind of things. It's got bony plates that cover the whole body. It's got this flattened snout that comes out. Um, you see it's got some of these barbs that come up underneath the snout. Like I said, it's the Minnesota's largest fish. Um, some big lakes you find it in, and then it's also found in the Mississippi as well. And these things can be five, six feet long as they're, as they're growing. Um, interesting video here. If you, if you want to um, check it out, it's a little bit I don't want to say it's a little bit elementary. It's a little bit um, like, like it should be on PB, PBS. But um, it, it shows a cool look at how they're managing the populations and trying to get these things to um, to reproduce on their own out in the wild again. Next up is the gar or the long-nosed gar. Yes, this does live in Minnesota. All right. It is this weird. It should be an easy one to identify. It's got this weird, long... Um, very, you know, toothy uh, snout to it. Uh, these things are aggressive in nature, right? They'll, they'll go after a variety of different things. Uh, it likes living in warm, shallow waters. And like the dogfish, it is also capable of breathing a little bit of air. There's the long-nosed gar. There's, there's other species of gar in the, found in the United States that are much larger. Just look at that thing. Next up, a popular ice fishing um, trophy or, or fish that people are after in their ice fishing is a yellow perch. It is very walleye shaped um, because it's a smaller cousin to the walleye. Um, it's a pan fish. People enjoy eating perch. Uh, it itself is a worm eater. That's a, a common um, bait used. Uh, and with the yellow perch, it has this, this very pretty kind of yellow underside and then these dark markings that extend down into it. So kind of giving it kind of a striped look as we go. So if you look, there's a nice shot of a, mm, that's, that's probably a, a medium sized, um, yellow perch. Uh, you can see it's got that, that yellow underbody with that tiger striping going down in there. Next up is a common perch eater, and that is a northern pike. And the, um, anyone that's fished the waters of, of, of Minnesota before is familiar with the northern pike. Um, a lot of people kind of have a love-hate relationship with, uh, with northerns. Um, they are a vicious predator. So they will essentially, if they see something swimming in the water by them, they will reach out and attack it. Um, they have a lot of teeth. This is a fish that you should never have your hands um, around their mouth. Okay, if you happen to catch one, um, you want to make sure you have pliers. You do not want to 
they, they do they do death rolls. Um, you do not want your fingers anywhere near that that pike's mouth there. Um, these things can single-handedly destroy panfish populations. Like I said, they are vicious predators, and so they will decimate um, pan or sunfish populations if not properly balanced and, and kept in check. How do you identify them? They have these long kind of torpedo-like bodies, and they have a dark background with these kind of yellowish colored um, spots along there. And their dorsal fin um, sits very far back as you're going. There's a look at the northern pike. There's kind of a look at, it, at its teeth a little bit there that you can see. Here's a look at one in the water. Um, there's different, we have different um, zones for them. Um, I, was, I was kind of speaking of them negatively. Uh, they're, they're native species. They definitely play an integral role in our ecosystems. Um, there's a lot of fishermen that don't like them because they are, they said they're, they are kind of a nasty fish. They have slime on them. They have a lot of teeth. And so they're not as um, fun for some people to catch as, as bass are. Um, I don't, I kind of like catching them still. So um, there's, there's a nice look at one that's a um, kayak fisherman there with a 36 inch northern. So they can get to be quite big. They can be up um, close, get close to four feet in length. So they are, they are a big fish. But not as big as the fish that looks the most like it, the muskelunge or the muskie. All right, it is one of Minnesota's most sought after fish. It is kind of a, what are, what is what I'm looking for? Not a rite of passage, but it is kind of Minnesota fishermen, you know, that you might get a couple musky in your lifetime. You know, you're going to catch a bunch of walleye, a bunch of northerns, a bunch of bass, but you remember the days that you catch a musky. Um, it's one of the most sought after fish. People will spend um, thousands on um, guides and on resorts in order to go musky fishing to try to catch a couple. Uh, it likes to lay in weed beds before lashing out at, at prey. Uh, it's also very tube shaped, but if you notice the colors from the northern are kind of flipped. So instead of a dark background with light spots, we have a light colored background with some dark spots in there. And they get to be much, much larger than um, northerns do. I don't know. I think the state record's close to well, what is it? It is it is recent. It's close to five feet. I think it's like fifty-seven inches or, or something like that for the for the record musky. Um, they also kind of have this red tipped tail in the back there too. So they get to be quite large. Um, even the skinny ones here, even the skinny ones are are quite large. There's a 46, 47 inch musky, I think. But notice the tail. All right, the tail has that um, kind of a reddish color to it in there. Um, probably uh, this, the, this and the muskie can't go back and forth for what um, are the most sought after fish in Minnesota. Uh, muskies are sought after for the trophy and walleye are sought after after the meat. Okay, people love eating walleye. Um, walleye have a slender body. Uh, their eye is actually kind of opaque. So it's kind of a, it's cloudy is what it looks like. Almost looks like it has a cataract of sorts. Um, it's got some black spots near the dorsal fin, and then it's got some white tips on the anal fin here. So we take a look at it. There's a look at a walleye. It's got teeth. Don't put your don't put your hands around its mouth. Well, it's got the two dorsal fins up there. Um, definitely a pretty fish. Um, can be a tougher fish to catch. And like I said, it's really sought after for the protein. Uh, it is a um, delicacy that a lot of people enjoy eating. Next up after the walleye is its smaller um, cousin, and that's the sauger. All right, it's tough. These, these two get um, misidentified sometimes. A large sauger looks kind of like a small walleye. Um, how you can tell is the sauger should have those these black kind of half moons on that dorsal fin that you can see up there, and then some darker striping extending down from the side. So if you look, here's a sauger. You see those black spots on the dorsal fin. But you can also see why people get that commonly confused with this one look at that those are pretty similar looking fish there so saugers and walleye all right make sure again there we got three left all right so three species left and these are the sunfish so the panfish um these are the ones that if you go out to the end of the dock of a dock and look down you're probably going to see them swimming around in the shallows um huge population sizes relatively small fish if any one of these 
if any one of these um, was the size of your hand, it would be a huge fish there. So starting with, um, oh, sorry, sorry, starting with sunfish beds. All right, so here's a look at their, their nest, so to speak, where they raise their young. Um, you'll see these in, in, in lakes. There'll be these spots where it's been picked clean and there's rock piles. That's where they like to, you know, sit down and lay their eggs and protect their nest in there. So those are sunfish beds. So the first one's a bluegill. Um, bluegill has a, a dark spot um, near the rear uh, of the, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that, it should be toward the rear of that uh, operculum right there. It's got these dark bars on the side. It kind of has this bluish tint up by the gills. And then a lot of times you can see this yellow orange belly on them as well. There's a nice look at a pretty bluegill there. I may see they're a fat fish. Um, they're, they're tasty as well. People like, people like to eat bluegill as you're going. Uh, next one, I think is the prettiest sunfish and that is the pumpkin seed. Uh, almost the exact same shape as the bluegill. Uh, it's just a different coloration. You can kind of see these wavy blue cheeks um, going, lines going through the cheeks on the adult. It has a striped dorsal fin and kind of a spotted body. So look at that thing. That thing's a pumpkin seed sunfish. It's a really pretty looking um, fish, panfish you might see. And the last one's a green sunfish. Um, these are a little bit more drab colored, but they do have some of those bluish spots still found throughout their body. So there's a look at a green sunfish there. Okay, hey, finally, that took, that took a little bit of time. Is that all the, you know, Minnesota fish species? Absolutely not. There's um, all kinds of other um, fish species that we haven't touched. We could, you know, spend a whole class just talking about Minnesota fisheries. Um, but that is our list for today.